Are you ready to learn how to navigate the view in Blender? Now you might notice that from our last video, I haven't done the homework, so I'm gonna do that real fast and I'm gonna do it with hotkeys. So I press A to select everything, X to delete it, select that, press Shift A to pull up the add menu and under mesh, add a monkey. Now the problem with modeling anything in 3D is that our tools are actually 2D. Your mouse moves forward and backward, left and right on your table. If you lift it up, nothing happens and you really can't push it further into the table. Also our screen, it's flat too. It's really only 2D. So how do we tell the computer that we're wanting to do things in 3D and how do we make sure that it looks good from every angle? Well, the first thing we gotta learn to do is to change our view. Now, the first thing I wanna teach you is how to zoom. Zooming's really easy. Your mouse hopefully has a scroll wheel on it. And if you push that scroll wheel up or pull it back, we will zoom in and out. But there's another way to do this. On the right-hand side of your 3D view, there's this little 3D compass in the upper right-hand corner. And if you go down from that, there's a icon that looks like, well, it looks like a magnifying glass. If you click it, nothing happens, but if you click and drag on it and move your mouse up and down, that's how you can zoom with that. But there's another way to zoom. So go up to the view menu into 3D view. View, go down to, uh, I believe it's, is it a line view or is it na navigation? There it is. And then there is the zoom in and zoom out. Notice that the hotkeys for those are numpad plus and numpad minus. So I'm just gonna come over to my number pad. If you have a number pad on your keyboard, if you're not using this on a laptop or something and you have a number pad, then you can hit plus and minus to zoom in and out. And in fact, that number pad is going to be super useful later on for navigating the view. Almost all of the number pad is used for the view in Blender. But let's talk about the next idea. The next idea is orbiting the view or being able to look at things from different angles. Now there's a lot of ways to do this. The easiest of which is probably just that 3D compass in the upper right hand corner. If you click and drag on it, we will be changing our view all over the place. Look from below and from above and from the left and from the right and behind it. You can change the view with that compass, super easy. But there's another way. On that mouse, that scroll wheel that we talked about earlier, it's actually a button. So if you take and click and hold that button down and move your mouse around, you can orbit the view. And I like this method because it works no matter where your mouse is. But there's another way. Go up to the view menu. Go to the navigation. Uh, actually, I think it's a line view. Nope. Navigation. There it is. <laughs> and we have orbit left, orbit right, orbit up, orbit down. And those are numpad four, six, eight, and two, and then orbit opposite. Well, we'll talk about that in a second, but look at your number pad. Four, six, eight, and two are all lined up to kind of be up, down, left, right. And notice that when you orbit with the number pad, it doesn't orbit smoothly. It kind of jumps to these various angles. And that can actually be super useful in certain circumstances. But for now, just want you to know that it's a possibility. And we saw that nine would be orbit opposite. And what does that do? Well, let's press it and find out. Nine on the number pad flips around. Now, if you don't have a number pad on your, on your keyboard, you can't really follow along with this, but fortunately you have other options. But nine is a useful thing to be able to just look at things from the opposite side. So there we go, orbiting with the number pad. Now there's another way to orbit. I want you to snap my orbit to the front or the side or the top, and there's a couple of ways that we can do it. Change your view so that you're kind of looking at things at a diagonal angle, and then look at that 3D compass. You notice how there's X, Y, and Z on it, and if you go opposite the X, it says negative Y, negative X, negative Z. If you go opposite those buttons, we'll click on one of them. Let's click on the X. Boom, it snaps to the side, and Z snaps to the top, and Y snaps to the back. And if you click on Y again, it snaps to the front. If you click on X, 
and then click on X again. Of course, you can jump straight to the, like, the bottom view by clicking negative Z if you can see it. And if you can't see it, you can orbit that view a little bit to where you can see it, or you just click it again. You'll get there. Now there's another way to do it, and this way is super tricky. So reorbit your view so that you're at a kind of diagonal angle again. And let's go up to the view menu. View, viewpoint, and then uh, forget about camera. Top is seven, bottom is control seven. Front is one, bottom is control one on the number pad. Right is number pad three, left is control number pad three. Let's try those out. One on the number pad. Front view, control one. Back view, seven. Top view, control seven. Bottom view, three. Side view, control three. Other side view. Now, one, three, seven, those might not be as easy to remember. Their positions on the number pad uh, kind of make sense. Seven's kind of above and three is to the side and one is, well, one is there. But it might be hard to remember those. However, that's going to be our homework. But we're not done yet because we need to talk about panning our view or being able to move something out of the way so that we can look at something off to the side or behind it. And how do we do this? Well, <laughs> there's multiple ways to do it. One way, under that 3D compass, the second button down looks like a hand. Click and drag that hand. And we are now moving the monkey to the side and focusing our view somewhere else. Notice now if we rotate our view, the monkey is not in the middle. So we can click and drag our view and move it around and look at other things. Next, or another way to do this, is we go up to the view menu and we see that we have navigation and it's called panning, pan left, pan right. So it's done with control number pad. So control number pad four, six, eight, and two allows us to pan view. And again, it's doing that by that, you know, kind of jumpy motion, but it, it works. Now there's another way to do it. Hold down the shift key on your keyboard and click and hold that middle mouse button, that scroll wheel, and drag. And I like this method because it works wherever your mouse is. But this is a quick way to pan your view around. But notice again, we're not centered on our monkey. So what if we want to recenter on our monkey or, or center on whatever? Well, here's how we do that. Click Suzanne, go up to view, and go up to or is it frame selected? There it is. It's number pad period. So the period key on the number pad. So I'm just going to try that period key on the number pad centers our view on Suzanne. And if we rotate our view, notice it's centered on Suzanne now. Now you might have noticed under view, there's also uh, frame all. If we had multiple objects in the view, we could hit the home key on our keyboard and it would frame all of them together. But right now, the only thing we have is Suzanne. Okay, so that is how we rotate, pan, zoom, and adjust our view. And you need to get used to doing this in 3D. We always need to look at things from all kinds of different angles. Now, there's one more thing I want to talk about. You might have noticed that when we were in the top view, when we started to orbit just a little bit, like the, the, the image, the, the monkey jumped, but it jumped in a weird way. What happened was it jumped between orthographic and perspective view. And let me explain those. From the 3D compass, go four buttons down to the bottom one that looks like a grid and click it. Notice how now the grids in our 3D view are all lined up parallel to each other. Everything is, is lined up in a nice grid. Click it again and notice how everything goes to a vanishing point in the distance, gets smaller as it gets further away. Perspective view, that's what when it, everything is kind of going further away and gets smaller as it gets further away. This is how our eyes work. This is how we take in the real world. But orthographic view is kind of how we think about it. Things that are lined up are, are lined up in our head. And we don't think about the fact that, well, while that's distant, it's going to be smaller. So in orthographic view, distant objects are the same size as near objects, which can be really useful 
for lining things up. And when you jump to the top view, it automatically puts you in orthographic view. But when you start to move your view, it jumps you back to perspective view. Now there's another way that we can jump back and forth between them. So let's go up to view and let's go to in navigation. No, it's right there. Uh, perspective orthographic numpad five. So five on the number pad. Oh, well that's what it's for. It jumps between perspective and orthographic view. Which one do you use? It very much depends on what you're doing at the time. You're gonna choose whatever's good for what you're doing. Homework. Okay, here's your homework assignment. I want you to practice using the numpad keys if you have them on your keyboard because they are a super quick and useful way. But, you know, I want you to practice them. And if you don't wanna use them after that, that's fine. But here's how we're gonna practice them. Take your view, orbit it, so that you're looking at the monkey from the front, and then take a guess at which one of those keys, one, three, or seven, will jump you to the front and hit it. So I'm going to guess three. Oh no, wait, that was the side view. Okay, I messed that one up. So now what I want you to do is choose a different view. Let's go from the top. No, let's make it hard on myself. I'm gonna go from the bottom, okay? Well, from the bottom, I remember it was control something, uh, control seven, maybe. There we go. I got it right. Notice that quick jump from perspective to orthographic view. So if I want to look at it from the, the left side, hmm, which one was this? Well, maybe it's control three. Aha, that was correct. So go ahead and just orbit your view to different views, front, top, side, bottom, back, and then Take a guess and hit it. And I want you to repeat that like 20 times. So view, change, view, change, view or snap, I suppose, snap, and then snap to the other side. And when you can do that, like, you know, five, 10, 20 times in a row without missing any of them, then that's all you need to do for the homework. This is just a little bit of practice, just a little bit of snapping your view into ways that make sense for you. Now, if after using this, you're like, you know what, this is just isn't for me, that's fine. But I want you to practice it a little bit because it is a very powerful tool to know which one of those keys to hit and to be able to hit them quickly. But that's all for today. I wanna to thank you very much for watching. And I wanna remind you that you are a child of God and I care about you a lot, so take care of yourself. And I'll see you in the next video. In the next video, we will talk about taking objects into view and moving them around. So see you then.